How's it going everybody? This is Jeff Bang with Team Real and the Blues. Before we get started, first I'd like to tell everybody I appreciate you taking time to watch my videos and if you have any questions or comments about what we're getting ready to do, feel free to leave them. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. But today, we're going to try to fix what I screwed up. What I have here is I've got a 70 pound thrust Minn Kota Power Drive iPilot. Trolling motor works really, really good, or it did until I done something stupid. I bent my prop shaft. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that have these Minn Kotas or any trolling motor, but today we're talking about Minn Kotas, and you'll all of a sudden start developing a vibration. This one doesn't vibrate at all through any of the speeds until you get up around seven or higher. Now, by the time you get to 10, I had this shaft bent so bad that it was literally shaking so bad it was knocking stuff off the side rails of my boat. Well, I tried to fix it the, uh, not so perfect way. I actually put a dial gauge on the shaft, took the prop off while it was still on the boat, and I turned it to see how much it was out, and it was out a pretty good bit. And I was able to kind of bend it back and get it closer. I went fishing with it, and it did. It got me to where I didn't feel any vibration until I got it up to about 10. But I figured, why leave it like that, take a chance on messing up the bearings or even doing more damage to the motor? Let's go ahead and fix it. So I got online. I ordered a new armature. And that's actually got the prop shaft on it. I'm holding it by the stainless steel part here. I'll put a link down below. I ordered it off Amazon. Most of the time you can get these for 100 bucks up to about $150. Now, this is already a fairly new model Minn Kota. This one already has the updated armature. Some of the older Minn Kotas, and I'm not sure how far back it goes when it went to the old style, but some of the older ones, the armature, if you ran it on high for a long time, it would actually really get hot. It would get hot enough that it could tear the motor up. Sometimes the magnets would come loose in them. Uh, the brushes would burn up in them. It would melt some of the wiring. Again, that was uh, running it on high for an extended period of time, you know, six, seven hours, like people that are out there pulling Alabama rigs for striper. Uh, in a river, fighting the current, bumping and stuff like that. But this one is actually the updated model, which is probably what I have. And it came with this, it came with new brushes, new O-rings, it came with everything I needed. Like I say, I will put a link down below in the description and you should be able to order it. I paid less than $100 for it and that was delivered. So you can't beat the price. Now, a lot of people are scared to work on something like this, but it's really not that hard. It's not that complicated. So, let's get started. First, let me show you what comes in the kit. And like I say, it comes with this. It comes with the new brushes. It comes with the inner and outer seal that goes in the end of it. These little O-rings here are what goes on the bolts. This is your outer seal, and this is your inner seal. If you have some good dielectric grease, that comes in handy also. Uh, half inch wrench, half inch ratchet, whatever you got, and a 5 sixteenths is pretty much the only tools you'll need to do this. And you can see the new armature already has the bearing on the end of it, so it's a pretty simple process. You'll notice I'm leaving it in the bag because I don't want to touch any of this copper with my bare hands. Most of the time I would use gloves because you don't want to get salt or anything like that on this because it will cause it to corrode prematurely. But let's get started on it and I'll show you just how easy this is. Okay, like I say, if it wasn't for doing this in a video, I, I could do this whole process in probably less than 10 minutes. But doing the video is gonna take a little longer. So first let's talk about it. This in here was vibrating. I thought maybe it was the prop. And I'm gonna tell you, most of the time when these vibrate, uh, first thing you should do is check his prop. If his prop's got a chunk knocked out of it, it causes it to be imbalanced, so it'll cause it to vibrate. Second thing that it causes these to uh, vibrate a lot of times, if you get a lot of string, fishing line, wrapped around the inside of this, it will actually cause this thing to twist because of the pressure of the line pushing against it, and it can cause it to run kind of skewed. That'll call a, cause a vibration. So first thing you need to do definitely is take this off. But I knew this one was crooked, and the reason why I know it's crooked because I could turn this prop and I could see it actually wobbling at first. And like I say, I had a dial gauge I put on it, and that showed pretty quick that I actually had a bend in the shaft. 
You can't replace the shaft, you have to replace the entire armature. All right, we'll pop that off, set it over here out of the way, pull the pin, set it over here out of the way. So all right, now we got it off. This is a 5 16 on most models. Now, before you take anything loose, mark this. Mark which side goes this way and mark its location. Believe it or not, you can put this on turned 180 degrees and this motor will not run properly. Uh, sometimes they would run backwards. Uh, and if you don't have it lined up exactly the way it came from the factory, it can cause the timing to be off on the electric motor. You can actually turn this motor, loosen this up and turn this motor and this motor will run at a higher RPM. You can turn it this way and it'll run at a lower RPM. Don't ever do that. This motor is designed to where everything is balanced. That it knows when these, when the current hits it, it knows exactly how much to turn and it don't overheat. You'll see people they'll turn it. When you turn it, what it's doing is it's actually twisting these bolts. And what'll happen eventually? This thing will go back to true. And if it goes back to true, these bolts are going to be loose. Maybe not a whole lot, but they will be looser. So. I say put it back exactly the way you found it and you'll never have an issue. So I marked it with a piece of painter's tape. I also put a mark right here with this Sharpie, but it being black, you can't hardly see it. But we'll go with this. I, I've got a white pen that I'll use a lot of times. But let's go ahead and take it apart. So we got it marked. We know how we can put it back exactly the way it came off. We know which end was pointing this way. And there's another way and I'll show you in a minute how that is. These bolts are not super tight. They're actually pretty loose. I think this model is 40 inch pounds, 40 to 45, I think. So hopefully you got a inch torque wrench. If not, you know, just make sure you snug them both up about the same to where it closes up this gap. Uh, you don't want to over tighten them. These are all, these are pretty long bolts. If you over tighten them, you can tear it up. And you don't want to over tighten one and not tighten the other that could cause it to be twisted. Cause this is gonna have a rubber gasket here and a rubber gasket here. So you take those two rubber gaskets, there's a lot of a lot of play in it. You could cause it to skew a little bit. All right, we got that one loose. You can use an impact to take it apart, but do not use an impact to put it back together. Like I say, it doesn't take that long, just do it this way. If you use the impact, you can over tighten this really quickly and do a lot of damage. I've had to fix these for people who did that and it wasn't pretty. I'm trying to drill out that bolt where it broke off in the casing there. All right, there we go. Now, you can see there's an O-ring on this. We've got the new O-rings in the kit. So we'll just go ahead and set that out the way. It's not really as necessary, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark this. So now everything is marked and we can put it back together the way it came apart. All right, first thing you wanna do is take this off. Like I say, you got an inner, you got an inner and an outer. You got an inner seal and you got the outer seal. We'll change those out. Even though these aren't in that bad of shape, we'll go ahead and change them out anyway. And you got a brass bushing on the inside. That could be copper, same thing. All right, we'll twist it and slide it out. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Let me go ahead and prop this end up so it don't tip over and then we'll proceed. Okay, I'm back. Like I say, all this could have been done while it was still in the boat. I took it off of the boat so that I could bring it in here and just make it a little bit easier in the light for you to see exactly how to do this. Now these magnets in here are, when I say they're strong, that's an understatement. It is hard to pull it out. And you can see this one has got the updated and the newer version of the armature. And you can tell by looking at them, this one here, it's got a little wear on it, but really that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Everything else looks good on it. I hate I, uh, I damaged it, but I did. All right, let me go ahead and take this off. We want to put it back together exactly the way we found it. 
All right, we'll get rid of this armature here. Here's the new armature. But before we put the new armature in, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the bushings and the brushes inside there. Okay, as you can see, these brushes weren't hurt a bit. If it hadn't been for me being stupid and been in the prop shaft, I wouldn't have to be doing any of this. But anyway, all right, I did notice a little water in there. So it's probably a good thing I'm doing this. This is a T15 Torx head screwdriver. We're going to take that loose. Like I said, this isn't that hard to do. Trying to stay out of the way of the camera, so it makes it a little bit harder than normal. All right, pull that. Now, these are loose. You essentially just pull it out. The wires are actually hooked to the back of it. Now, you can see how this was in there. Just like this. Black is on that side, red is on this side. So just kind of look at what you got when you take it out and that way you can put it back the exact same way. And you see, here's what we got. This is can be turned either way. But you can see, put the black here, red here, and put it right back in that way. Let me go ahead and get these wires disconnected. These can be kind of stiff, and a lot of times I keep a flat tip screwdriver just to pop them off. I tell everybody, anytime you do something like this, if you're uncomfortable, take pictures. Take a lot of pictures. Let me get my flat tip screwdriver. All right, and I'll pop that off. That was easy enough. Now, we can go ahead and discard this and grab the next piece. I wiped the water out of there so it's good and dry. Here's the new one. I just went in and stuck that same cardboard spacer in there. It really don't do anything, but I went ahead and put it back in there anyway. All right, let me show you a trick here. And this is what messes a lot of people up. They, they're not sure how to get these uh, brushes to work. So I'm gonna show you. This spring actually puts the tension on the brush. What you'll look, See that little notch right there? It's not much. Take that spring and just lay it in that notch. Do the same thing on this side. And you'll see why we do that here in just a second. All right, we got that. Now let's go ahead and put the brushes in. Stick them in. I had to help I put them in right. Stick them in. And then just stick your wire down through the hole. And what you're doing is you're actually, this thing's got a little snap thing on it. And when it goes in, it locks it. Same thing here. Put it on. Stick it down through there. And it's locked. There you go. That's how simple that is. Now, the reason why we put that there is once you pop that down, see it pushes the brushes forward and puts the tension on the bottom of your armature makes your motor run. The better this snugs up, the better your motor's gonna run. But if you leave that on there now, you can see it pushes out, it makes it almost impossible to get the armature in. So, hook the little snap up there, and then once we get the motor in, we can reach down there and pop them loose to put the tension on it. Now, we've got that part done. Let's go ahead and plug our wiring back up to it. And make sure that it connects. Make sure you get good connection. It don't come loose. And like I say, they're new, so it's gonna be kinda, kinda snug. All right, we're plugged in, everything's hooked up. Get this wire back on top. And then all we gotta do pretty much is put it right back in the hole. Now, once we get it down in here, we'll put our bolts right back in it. Okay, I tried to get the camera in a little bit different angle where you could see a little better, but ah, that was a uh, losing battle. So let me go ahead and get these put in. 
And like I say, you only got two places that these uh, screws could go in, so it shouldn't be that hard to get it to line back up. And once it lines back up, you just tighten them down. I got that one just loosely fit in there. Now this one was holding this wire. So we'll go ahead and put it back on there. Move it around till it fits. There you go. All right, there we go. Okay, before we finish putting it together, I took and wiped the inside of this out using a, a, a dry cloth. I made sure there was no moisture, nothing in there. Everything's nice and clean. Now you'll notice on these, you have a square face. It's kind of hard to see. And you have a tapered face. The tapered face goes to the outside and that's because of the O-ring. Now, before we put any of this together, Let's go ahead and put our new gasket here. Here's the old gasket, and you can see there's a little bit of water around this thing. So it's probably a good thing we've done this. We probably had a small leak, which is not uncommon. And most of the time it won't damage it too bad if you got a real tiny leak. Now if it fills it up with water, that's not a good thing. All right. So that's nice and dry. Here's our new rubber seal. We'll go ahead and pop it in place. That's good. Now, you'll see some people, they'll go ahead and put this in. The problem with putting this in right now is when you go to stick this armature in there, this thing is gonna suck that armature in. And when it does, it'll end up going clean out and it could damage something inside here. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You can't hold this. All right, I'm going to slide it in. Let me get that little piece of lint right there. It'll probably snatch it out of my hand. See? Ooh, there you go. It preloaded itself. Now, now that I got it like this, this is how it goes in. Just like this. And that's all there is to it. Now, the problem is, if you do this, so you can't get the brushes in the right spot. So you have to do it this way. Sometimes you can push this thing out enough to do it, but with me trying to do it in front of the camera, it ain't gonna work. So let me show you how you have to do this. I, I'm gonna show you one way to do it, and like I say, if I wasn't trying to film it, I would do it a different way, but this is one way you can do it. You can go ahead and place this in. Like I say, try to keep your hands off of this part. Try to keep your hands off of this part. You don't want to get any salts or oils or anything like that off your hands. This shaft is staying still. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. So what you do is you can put it in place, get it all the way back where she's locked in, and then those little springs I showed you earlier, you just kind of pull it out and down. That easy. Now this shaft is actually being held but I want to keep it braced because I don't want to take and push these brushes over to the side and knock chunks out of them. And then we'll move on to the next section here. I know it's hard to see, but these two springs are inside these slots. I'll show you on this. These springs, when I pushed them down, they went inside these slots and that automatically line them up in the slot that's inside the brush. So now it's pushing forward. It's got that thing locked in place. You'll notice I've turned the trolling motor point straight up. So now this is sort of locked in place and it's braced. Now I'll show you how to slide the other part on it. Okay, we got the brushes engaged. We've got it turned straight up and down. Now here's the tricky part, getting this on there without damaging anything and without pulling this back out. Because I'm gonna tell you what happened. I've had it happen to me before. You go to slide it on and when you get it about three quarters of the way down, it'll jerk this up instead of letting this go down. And you don't want this to slam down in there because the magnets are going to want to pull it down. So a little trick that I've learned, 
And another thing, while I'm thinking about it, be careful setting it around any metal parts. These magnets will suck them up inside of here, and if they get inside of here and you turn your motor on, you're going to damage your motor. But anyway, I like to use a screwdriver or something like that. I'll put it over that shaft. That helps me hold it, and it being plastic, it won't be attracted to the magnets, and that way I can hold that down in there when I'm sliding this down on it. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, here we go. I can put pressure on top of this and hold it down. But what we'll do is we'll get this started. Like I said, the magnets want to draw it toward it. And like I say, this is where it gets kind of tricky. You can't let that slam down too hard. There we go. It pulled down in there pretty good, but by me holding this down, it kept it from pulling the armature up and causing that to come loose. Now all I gotta do is slide that off and our armature's in. Now all I gotta do is put the new seals in this and bolt it back together. Literally, if I wasn't doing a video on it, this whole process takes about 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Let me go ahead and change out these seals and all we gotta do to change them out is just take the old ones out, stick the new ones in. It's not really that hard to do. Okay, to get these seals out, most time all you gotta do is use a screwdriver or something. If you can put something right in that hole, it'll pop it right out, but there we go. There's one. And kind of pay attention to the way they come out. If you notice, that one was facing with the silver side out. That's this particular one. This one, if you notice, it's got the uh, spring inside of it. And if you look down in here, you'll see which way it is turned. You just got to take note of how it's turned when you take this one out. Let me go and pop this one out, and then we'll put the new ones in. This will go right back in there, like that. And we'll pop out this one here. Be careful not to damage anything. And if you can't get it out, and you see that one popped right out. But if you can't get it out, uh, don't scratch or damage this part. It's not that big a deal if you get a little scratch on it, but you don't want to if you don't have to. So now, we've got that out, we'll stick our inner one in. I'll put a little grease inside here to make it easier to slide it in. Shouldn't take but just a few minutes. Okay, like I said, these aren't that hard to put in. This is that little piece that came out of it. I'm going to set it off to the side. I took it back out of it. We got a little grease around the outside of it. You don't want a whole lot. Get it lined up where it goes. Now, a trick that I've learned is to find a socket the size, just slightly smaller. And I'll show you why. Because this thing here, you don't want to damage it. So you can use something like a socket. Put it in upside down like that right there. And then you can actually drive this back in. So you just line it up and then tap it with a hammer. And then it draw it right down in there. Now you can see I've got it started. That's the hard part. Now we'll tap it the rest of the way in. And you see, it goes right down in there. And once you get it all the way down, you can tell when it bottoms out, you'll feel it doesn't move anymore. All right, she's all the way down. We'll go ahead and put that back inside there. Now that part's done. Now we'll put our new outer one on. Same thing, we'll put a little bit of grease on the outside of it to make it fit in here a little better, and then we'll put her in. Same process, just get started. And this one here, you can be a little bit more aggressive with, but you still don't want to damage it. And you want it to be nice and straight. Now, it's nice and straight and just barely below the surface, and that's what you want. And you can tell it's actually perfectly flat. And if you're not sure, just lay a straight edge across it and look at it, and that'll tell you whether or not you're perfectly flat. This one looks really good. It's right dead perfect. Now we'll go ahead and put the rest of it together. All right, we got our new seals in. We cleaned the outer edge of this right here. If you look, it's got an O-ring right there. 
We'll go and take that old O-ring off, even though it was still in great shape. Here's the new O-ring. Go ahead and pop it on. And that's why this was tapered. That allows this O-ring to squeeze down in there without pinching it or without damaging it at all. So we'll put just a little bit of grease around this part right here before we install it. But before we install it, let's go and get the bolts ready. I've already took the old O-rings off. It's simple. Just slide them over. Try not to force them. Kind of turn the bolt as you're putting them on and then just slide them up. The reason why I turn the bolt is that keeps it from digging into that O-ring and damaging it. Again, very little grease. You don't want a lot. Okay, everything's ready. We already got our O-ring on. We got our new O-rings on this part. Now all we gotta do is line this up, which ain't gonna be hard because I got that piece of tape on it. We'll line it up exactly where it was before. I've got two reference marks on it. So I know this right here is exactly the way it was from the factory. And I actually marked this part here too. So there's my mark. I know you can't see it, but my mark's on that part there as well. We know we got our seals in. We know we got our bushies that we took off of this. We put them right back on it. So now all we've got to do is we got to slide this over it. Again, kind of turn it a little bit as you're going and it will slide right down on it. Now my O-ring is starting to touch. This here is just a little bit and you see the magnets got pushed to the side. Boom. We're done. Now all I gotta do is line these up and drop the bolts in. There we go. There we go. First try. Put right in the holes. There we go. Got everything started, we're ready to tighten it down. All right, we got everything lined up now. Let's go ahead and torque them down. Now, these only torque to about 40 to 45, I think, but you can look at the specifications on your particular model. It's amazing how little torque that actually is. So be very careful. It'd be really easy to, to break these little tiny bolts. So, Try, if you've got the ability to get to a inch pounds torque wrench, get you one. If you know a friend that has one, get it. So what we're gonna do first, we're just gonna snug these things up. We're not even really snug. I'm talking about we're just gonna take the play out of this uh, cap. All right, I got them both about the same, but I can still move the cap. We'll go ahead and lay it over on the side. I'll double check my marks. I'll get it lined up exactly to where it was before. I put a mark here and I put a mark here. And I mean, if you're off a 16th, that ain't going to hurt too bad. But if you could get it back exactly the way the factory had it, you're better off. There we go. Everything is lined up perfectly. This particular model is around 40 to 45. I got an inch pounds torque wrench. I got it set at uh, 30 right now. We'll go ahead and run them to down to 30. So I'm taking them just a little bit over halfway. Go ahead and raise this up a little bit. We'll go ahead and dial it up to 40. There we go. Everything's torqued down to 40 pounds. Now all we gotta do is go ahead and put our pin back in it, throw our prop on it, and we are done.
All right, we're gonna go ahead and finish this up. Before I put it together, I've let it rest a few minutes while I was messing with something else. So let's go ahead and check to make sure that this is torqued down exactly where it needs to be torqued down. So we'll go ahead and test it one more time. All right, the torque is done, everything is right. So now all we gotta do is reinsert this pin and you can turn it with your fingers and you can tell you'll feel a little bit of resistance so you know it's right. Go ahead and put your pin back in it, split the difference on it, and stick your prop back on. Washer and nut. All right, that's it. And we'll take it, uh, use a half inch wrench or a half inch ratchet in my case. We'll torque this back down. That's good. There's no play in it. And I'm looking at it as I'm turning it and the gap is the same all the way around. So we should have a perfectly balanced trolling motor again. Everything lines up, everything lines up, everything lines up. We're good to go. We'll stick it back on the boat. Well, there we go. I've got it put back on. Everything is hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the boat, and we'll test her out when I get her on the boat. Like I said, all this could have been done at the boat. It probably took me longer to take this off than it would have took to do the whole thing. And I know I said it a couple times during the video, but in actuality, if I hadn't been trying to video this and trying to put it where people could see what I was actually doing, I actually think I could do this entire process in five minutes, no more than 10. 10 is tops. Uh, like I say, I'll put a link down below to where I got the parts. I got it off of Amazon. And one other little tip, little FYI, keep your old stuff when you take it off, especially if it's not in bad repair, because you never know when you might have some freak accident and you'll burn up a set of brushes. These brushes are like new. So I'm gonna keep the brushes, I'm gonna keep this in, and I'm even gonna keep the old armature because I actually had it where it was actually pretty straight. So if I ever need one in an emergency, like if I really warp the crap out of this one, I'll have that one I can throw it on there. And then again, I'm a hoarder when it comes to boat parts. So some friend of mine will need one and I'll have one for him. But uh, another thing, when you take things apart, put all your old parts in one pile. And the reason why, I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. Put all your old parts or all the parts you got here, put them in a pile. Now, look, if you've got duplicates and you didn't have duplicates before, that means you forgot to put something in. So I know I only got one of each of these. I got one of each of these. And I got two of these. So I know I put the two other ones on there and I know I put all the other seals in. As always, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Uh, like I say, there's no reason you should be without a trolling motor for two or three weeks because you're waiting on them to fix it when you can order the parts and do it yourself. If you're not comfortable doing it yourself, find a friend that is mechanically inclined and have at it. I mean, what's the worst you could do? Another thing, take as many pictures as you can. If you're uncomfortable doing it, take pictures of everything as you take it apart scratch the casing to make sure you got a perfect point of reference to put it back together. Do whatever it takes to make yourself comfortable. Me, if it's something I've done for the first time, I take a lot of pictures. I'll take it apart, take a picture. Take something off, I'll take a picture of it. Pull this off, I'm gonna take a picture of it. That way, if I do get confused putting it back together, I can look at my pictures and go, oh, that was turned that exact way. I can put it back that exact way and not have any issues. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, comments at all, feel free to leave them and I will try to answer them as soon as I can. I hope everybody has a blessed and safe 2022 and uh, hopefully it'll be good for everybody. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.